Hi there, it's Matt here, and welcome back to the podcast. Two questions to start with. Why will you get tired this evening? And why, tomorrow morning when you wake up, will you be free from that tiredness? Well, it turns out that there are two independent but very complementary forces that explain exactly why this is the case. The first of those is called sleep pressure, and the second is called your circadian rhythm. Today, we're going to focus on the first of those two things. We're going to focus on sleep pressure. Because from the moment that you woke up this morning, a chemical has been building up in your brain. And the longer that you're awake, the more of that chemical will continue to build up. And the more of that chemical that builds up, the sleepier you will feel. This is what we call sleep pressure. And that chemical is called adenosine. And you can think of adenosine almost like a chemical barometer that continually registers the amount of elapsed time since you woke up this morning. So it's a chemical signal that helps tell your brain and your body how long that you've been awake. And when those levels get high enough, it will tell your brain it's time to go to bed because you're sleepy. Now, adenosine accomplishes this sleepiness using a very clever dual action effect. High levels of adenosine in the evening will simultaneously turn down the volume in wake-promoting regions of your brain, and it will crank up the dial on sleep-inducing regions of the brain. And at that point, with adenosine concentrations peaking, there should be an irresistible urge for slumber that will take hold of you. And it happens to most of us somewhere after about 12 to 16 hours of being awake. You can, however, artificially mute the sleep signal of adenosine by using another chemical that makes you feel more alert and more awake. You know this chemical, it's called caffeine. It's no coincidence, by the way, that those two things sound quite similar, caffeine and adenosine. It's down to the systems in the brain that they both act upon. Now, in a separate episode, don't worry, we will talk all about the effects of caffeine on sleep. But here, we're going to explain caffeine's effects on adenosine. In other words, the effect of caffeine on sleep pressure. Caffeine works by successfully battling with adenosine for the delightful privilege of latching onto what we call the adenosine welcome sites in the brain, or in other words, the adenosine receptors. And with its pretty sharp elbows, caffeine will nudge adenosine out the way and it will latch onto those adenosine receptors. But unlike adenosine, caffeine is not going to stimulate those receptors to produce more sleepiness. Instead, caffeine blocks and effectively inactivates those receptors, and it acts like a masking agent. So <laughs> it would be the equivalent of sticking your fingers in your ears to shut out the loud sound of that tiredness, of that adenosine sleepiness. And by hijacking and occupying those receptors, caffeine effectively blocks the sleepiness signal that would normally be communicated to your brain by the adenosine. So that's how caffeine works. It blocks the signal of sleepiness. But let's come back to adenosine. The buildup of adenosine during the day is only one half of our story here when it comes to sleep pressure. That explains why you feel tired towards the end of the day. What it doesn't explain, however, is why you don't feel tired, or, or at least you shouldn't feel tired, the next morning when you wake up. And this is where sleep enters our story as a new lead actor in the second half of the sleep play, as it were. The sponsor of today's episode is Athletic Greens. Now, I know at this point you're thinking, here comes the ad and I'm going to skip forward. I totally understand. But before you do that, if there's a chance I can briefly explain why I chose them as a sponsor, I'd so appreciate it. As you may know, Athletic Greens, it's a nutrition drink and it contains a pretty exhaustive inventory of vitamins and minerals and biotics, antioxidants. It's a long list, but you get the picture. I have always been, and I want to say upfront, rather committed 
<laughs> I should say obsessed with, getting my dietary needs from real meals. But I also know that however hard I try, I'm probably just not going to hit all of my targets on a given day. And that led me to Athletic Greens, in fact, led me there several years ago. And it did so for two main reasons. First, when it comes to my health, I always want a full coverage insurance policy. Second, I did my diligence on the science behind the ingredients, and I place a very high priority on empirical data as ground truth. So if you want to give it a try, just head on over to athleticgreens.com forward slash Matt Walker, and you will get money off your first order. Um, they've also kindly offered to provide a free one-year supply of vitamin D for you and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So you just have to use the link athleticgreens.com forward slash Matt Walker. Let's get back to the podcast. In other words, what happens to all of that accumulated adenosine once you fall asleep? Well, it's during sleep that a mass evacuation of adenosine gets underway. In other words, it's during sleep that the brain has the chance to degrade and remove the day's weight of adenosine. And across a night, sleep will essentially lift the heavy weight of sleep pressure off your brain, lightening the adenosine load. And after approximately eight hours of healthy sleep in the average adult, the adenosine purge is complete. And with that clearance of adenosine, together with changes in your circadian rhythm that we will speak about in the next episode, we will naturally wake up feeling refreshed. And as long as our sleep has been long enough and of good quality enough, we will feel restored by our sleep. And with that restoration, you are now ready to face another 16 hours of wakefulness with the physical vigor and sharp brain function that you would desperately hope for. So that is the story of sleep pressure, of how it works, how you can try to block it with caffeine, and why you will feel so good after one of those full and peaceful nights of sleep. And with that, I will simply say thanks for listening. I do hope you're enjoying these podcasts. If there's anything that you think I can be doing better, <laughs> short of a personality transplant, please let me know by reaching out. Probably the best way to reach out is on Instagram. You will find me on Instagram at Dr. Matt Walker. That's D-R Matt Walker, Matt with two T's. In other, why don't I just spell it out? D-R-M-A-T-T-W-A-L-K-E-R. -T -T -E and I just want to make clear that I'm not a medical doctor and none of the content in this podcast should be considered as medical advice in any way, shape or form and nor prescriptive in any way. Thanks so much again for listening and I will see you in the next episode.